Hi folks, today we're going to change tacks a bit and veer into still photography, uh, specifically instant photography. This is a Polaroid land camera model 800 and uh, it was made when the very concept of instant photography was only about a decade old. Let's talk about it. As I said, this is a Polaroid land camera. Named, of course, after the inventor of instant photography, Bob Polaroid. Just kidding. The camera was named after Polaroid founder, inventor, polymath, and certified silver fox, Edwin Land. Now, Land was sort of, uh, sort of Sean Connery to Steve Jobs' Daniel Craig. Or, if you prefer, Sean Connery to Elon Musk's Roger Moore. And uh, by that I mean to say that Land was sort of the original visionary genius CEO. Uh, but in a way, uh, even more so than Jobs or Musk, because uh, while Apple continued to thrive even after Jobs' death, and Musk getting on one of his rockets and moving to Mars permanently would probably be the best thing that could happen to Tesla, Polaroid was never really the same company after Land's retirement. Oddly enough, instant cameras were originally sort of a side project for Polaroid. Land founded the company in 1932 as Land Wheelwright Laboratories to sell his polarized optical equipment. Lenses, goggles, sunglasses and the like. In 1937, he renamed the company to better reflect its product, Polaroid. You see, Land invented a polarization process that allowed him to control the amount and kind of light that a lens let through. Have you ever owned a pair of anti-glare sunglasses? Uh, used a neutral density filter to take photos in bright light? Seen a 3D movie? Thank Edwin Land, because he invented the process for all of them. Polarized filters also turned out to have a lot of military applications, for everything from pilot goggles to gun sights. So Land's office did land office business during World War II. Land didn't just sell military gear. He was a sought-after scientific advisor and served on the National Defense Research Council. He would later serve as a science advisor for every president from Eisenhower through Nixon, and as a member of the President's Foreign Intelligence Advisory Board. He was also instrumental in the development of the U-2 reconnaissance plane, so in addition to instant photography, Edwin Land is responsible, indirectly at least, for Octung Baby and the Tom Hanks movie Bridge of Spies. But all that started because Land's inventions were invaluable to the war effort. So World War II, in a sense, made Land's reputation as a scientific and engineering genius. There was only one problem. By the end of the war, the small company that sold sunglasses had transformed into a corporate behemoth that owed about 85% of its business to military contracts. In order to keep the company solvent as the war wound down, Land was going to need a new big idea. In 1943, Land and his family took a vacation to Santa Fe, New Mexico. The story goes that while he was snapping pictures, his three-year-old daughter asked, Daddy, why can't I see the picture now? Now, most of us would have used this as an opportunity to teach our child some fucking patience, and that the world is a cruel place that eventually destroys all our dreams. But not Land. Land had an idea. He took his daughter back home and spent the rest of the day thinking. By the end of the day, he'd worked out the basic mechanism for an instant camera in his head. Fortunately, Land's patent attorney was also visiting the Santa Fe area at the time, so Land approached him and got the idea nailed down. Then he went back to Polaroid headquarters in Boston, assembled his team, and got to work. In 1947, Land demonstrated instant photography to the Optical Society of America. His team took a photo of him, put the film through a separate device, basically just a mechanism with rollers, and moments later, Land peeled a paper backing away to reveal a developed print, stunning the audience. By 1948, a consumer instant camera, the Model 95, was on sale. Polaroid originally manufactured a small run of only 60, 57 of which were put up for sale at the Jordan Marsh Department Store in Boston. Polaroid's marketing team thought the cameras would stay in stock long enough for the company to manufacture a larger second run. All 57 sold out on the first day, and the era of instant photography 
had officially begun. Now, if you're in my age group, which is to say slightly older than Justin Bieber and slightly younger than Senator Mitch McConnell, or if you're a fan of Robin Williams' more adult work, no, not that. Yeah, yeah, that. Mork and Mindy was really desperate for ratings near the end there. Anyway, if you're in those two age groups, you're probably thinking, instant photography, what's the big deal? I'll just drop my photos off at a photo mat and go pick up my dry cleaning or something. They'll be ready in an hour. Well, here's the thing. Photo mats didn't really exist in 1948, and especially not one hour photo mats. You had to send your film off to a film lab which in practice meant you had to send your film off to Kodak and then wait two weeks or a month or however long Kodak felt like making you wait because Kodak controlled the world and if you didn't like that, you could go fuck yourself. So instant cameras were a big hit, uh, but uh, the instant cameras of 1948 and uh, actually for the first several decades that instant cameras existed were a far cry from what we think of as instant cameras today. Still, all instant cameras from these early models all the way up to the Polaroid now in 2022 uh, operate on similar principles, which is why you can't really shoot instant film through a regular camera. Now, say 35 millimeter film, you could shoot through pretty much any camera as long as you can find a way to hold the film in place. Hell, you can shoot 35 millimeter film through a, a coffee can with a hole poked in it. Uh, really all you need to shoot traditional photographic film is a box that you can let a controlled amount of light into. But instant cameras are different. Instant film is different because the camera itself is integral to the development process. Every instant film camera from the Model 95 in 1948 to the Polaroid Go has a set of rollers. Now those aren't just for ejecting the film, you actually had to advance the film manually through the rollers in the early Polaroid cameras. What those rollers are doing, essentially, is developing your photo. Polaroid film comes with integrated packs of developing chemicals. When the film is advanced, those rollers burst that chemical pack and then uh, spread the developer evenly across the surface of the film. And that's how Polaroid photos can develop without a darkroom. It's also why you can't use a regular camera to shoot instant film without some heavy aftermarket modification or a dedicated film back. Without those rollers, you won't get a picture. Now let's take a look at how this camera worked. Now, the Model 800, like all early Polaroid cameras, took Polaroid roll film, which, as the name implies, came in a roll. So you would first load your camera Opening this up, put your film here, close, pull some paper tabs out until your film is ready to go. You would take your exposure, you would wait one minute, and then this is already open, but you would open this, and then you could peel your photo off the backing. It was a good system, but not good enough for land. You see, when he came up with the idea for instant photography, he envisioned a process uh, simple to the point of being intuitive. That meant no fiddling around with a camera between shots. So in 1963, Polaroid introduced pack film. Uh, you know, with pack film, you took a photo and you pulled the entire photo, negative backing and all, out of your camera as soon as you took the shot. And in a minute or so, you peeled the backing apart, there was your photo. But that still wasn't simple enough for Land. Back in 1944, he had envisioned an instant camera that would produce a photo with the push of a button. No cumbersome loading process, no backing paper to peel off. He knew what he wanted then. He just had to wait nearly 30 years for technology to catch up with his ideas. In 1972, Land's vision was fully realized with the introduction of the Polaroid SX-70, the first camera to shoot integral instant film. As the name implies, integral film has all the components necessary for development integrated into each frame. No need for backing paper, no extra steps. 
This is the film most of us think of when we think Polaroid. The square image, the white border a bit wider at the bottom. I used to think that white border at the bottom was simply so you could write on your photos if you wanted. Actually, it's the part of the film that stores the pack of developing chemicals. Integral film was a huge hit for Polaroid, and yet within just a few years of its introduction, uh, the company was in a decline from which it never really recovered. So what happened? Well, there's no one answer to that, but an early warning sign came from a, uh, a rare misstep on Land's part, Polavision. On paper, Polavision sounded like a winner, instantly developing home movies. Shoot your film, basically Super 8 film loaded into a special cassette. Put it in the player and 90 seconds later you could watch your home movie. But the system was a disaster for a number of reasons. First, it was prohibitively expensive. Second, it was launched in 1977 when uh, Super 8 cameras were already sort of on the way out and videotape was on the way in. A Polavision cassette couldn't be played on a regular television or even through a regular home movie projector because the film was too thick. It had no sound and it only held three minutes of footage. Early videotape held up to an hour and of course it would play on any television you could hook up to a VCR. Ultimately, Polavision just wasn't that impressive an idea compared to Land's earlier triumphs. Instead of giving the public something it had never seen before, he was giving them slightly juiced up Super 8, just as Super 8 was on the way out. For context, imagine if Steve Jobs had insisted on following the iPhone with something significantly less impressive. Hi Rusty, Steve Jobs here. Oh, hi Steve. How are things at the office? Oh, they're going pretty... Wait, are you in space? Of course I'm in space. I'm Steve Jobs. What, you think I vacation in the Catskills? I, I, I guess not. Maybe head to Orlando, say hi to Mickey? No, I... Let me tell you something, Rusty. I am Steve fucking Jobs. I could have Mickey killed with one phone call. Look, Steve, I... Why do you think Mighty Mouse isn't making cartoons anymore? Steve Jobs! Uh, sh sure, Steve. Uh... Is, is there anything I can do for you? Oh, right, 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 right. How's the iPhone selling? Lines around the block. It's changed the world, Steve. I mean, it's changed the world. What a legacy. Yeah, it's amazing, but we're not going to rest on our laurels here at Apple. I've just figured out what's next for us, and it's going to push us into the stratosphere. That's fantastic. What is it? This. That? What? You don't know what that is? Uh, 1996 Motorola StarTac? Exactly. But Motorola already made the StarTac. In 1996. But not the way we'll make it. Picture this. A color screen. I'm pretty sure they already make flip phones with color screens. It'll be huge, I tell ya. Huge! Steve Jobs! Forgive me if I'm speaking out of turn here, Steve, but it really seems like this is a step backward. Color screen, Rusty. Color. I mean, do you really want to go from this to a flip phone? Wait, is your screen broken? Of course it is. The phone fell off a low coffee table and landed on a shag carpet. It didn't have a chance. But the point is, flip phones are a step backward. A step backward? A step backward? Who's the genius here? You are, Steve. You're damn right! And if I say we're doing flip phones, we're doing flip phones! But... I am Steve fucking Jobs, do you hear me? And the future will bend to my will! I am the arbiter of things to come! I killed Mighty Mouse! Um, Steve, maybe you shouldn't... Steve Jobs! <sighs> okay, Steve. We'll make it happen. Goddamn right! Jobs out! God, I hate this place. So yeah, not the best decision on Land's part. Polavision was scrapped after only two years at a loss to the company of about $68 million. Uh, the whole fiasco led to Land's resignation as CEO in 1980, although he would remain chairman for 
another couple of years. But while Polovision shook Polaroid's confidence in Land's leadership, I would argue that his eventual complete retirement from the company in 1982 was the final straw that made Polaroid's decline irreversible. Polaroid continued to do respectably well under the first couple of CEOs following Land. It did very well in the 80s. But its failure to anticipate digital photography and some catastrophically bad management decisions, including by at least one guy who's currently in jail for running a $2 billion Ponzi scheme, decimated the company. It filed for bankruptcy in 2001 and again in 2008 and stopped producing instant film. Fortunately, an initiative called the Impossible Project came to the rescue, managing to save one Polaroid factory from demolition. That factory in the Netherlands is currently the only place in the world that produces Polaroid film. The Impossible Project eventually became Polaroid Originals and later simply Polaroid. Thanks to their dedication, a lot of old Polaroid integral film cameras are still in use today, and a new generation of Polaroid cameras is rolling off assembly lines. After leaving Polaroid, Land continued to do important work in the science of optics. He also founded the Rowland Institute for Science, now part of Harvard University. Edwin Land died in 1991. He held 535 patents, and his numerous awards and honors included the National Medal of Science and the Presidential Medal of Freedom. A humanist as well as a technician, he positioned his company at the cutting edge of the arts as well as the sciences, working with luminaries including Ansel Adams and Andy Warhol. Land also made sure the company was socially progressive, hiring women for important scientific and leadership roles from its inception and pushing to the forefront of the affirmative action movement in the 1960s. One wonders what would have happened to Polaroid if Land had stayed on a few more years. Personally, I think the company would now be synonymous with digital photography because even in the late 80s, I think Land would have seen it as the coming thing and poured the company's considerable research prowess into developing the technology. As it happened, both Polaroid and Kodak missed the train on digital photography and it nearly destroyed both companies. It seems like an obvious blunder now. But that's the thing about innovation. What seems impossible one moment seems obvious in hindsight. Every so often, however, a person comes along who can see the obvious while it's still impossible. Edwin Land was one of those people. He put in a lifetime's work to allow people to capture memories in an instant. It only seems right that we take a moment to remember him. If you'd like to learn more about Edwin Land and Polaroid, I highly recommend the book Instant, The Story of Polaroid by Christopher Bananos. It's a great read, it's a fast read, and it's full of a lot of amazing information that uh, unfortunately I just don't have time to get to in a YouTube video. Uh, for more about modern Polaroid cameras and classic Polaroid cameras shooting film on them, I highly recommend the YouTube channels Sweet Lou Photography, Analog Resurgence, and In an Instant. Uh, they're great, they're wonderfully entertaining, and unlike me, uh, they're actually really talented like professional photographers as opposed to an enthusiastic amateur who really doesn't know what he's doing. So I'll put links to all those channels in the description. Uh, that's all for today. Uh, thanks for sticking with me. And uh, if you enjoyed what you saw today, uh, please consider uh, liking and subscribing. Really appreciate it. Anyway, that's it for today. See you later.